doesn't mean no one's competing. You've named starters. There are starters across your lineup, across the field. What's up, everybody? The Friday edition of the Tex Ags Rewind. I'm Ryan Broniger. She's Callie Garner, big Aggie baseball fan. Good night at the ballpark last night. Great night at the ballpark last night. Uh, and then more important dates upcoming in the Aggie baseball calendar starting mm-hmm. tonight. What do you want to see out of this team this weekend? Can they get a sweep? I think so. I think it's very possible. I agree with OB. I think it can, I think it can be done. Going to need a good start out of Tanner Jones. We talked yeah. Aggie baseball with OB. We had Andrew Monaco who came in. The voice of the Aggies talked about his experience with the Aggie basketball team through their tournament run. Kicked off the 9 o'clock hour with former Texas A&M third baseman Trevor Warner, who's now in the Kansas City Royals organization. And then from there, we transitioned to the baseball bunch, or the baseball dummies with me, <laughs> Scott. And Richard, in the final hour, saw us talk to Billy Lucci. Was your favorite part of the program, Billy? I think you might have to say that. Yes. He did walk out, so you got <laughs> freedom to say what you want. I like the baseball bunch. I th- and Trevor was really cool, too. I, I like talking baseball. All right, here's the rewind. I, I wanted to soak in every single second of Boots. There is a poise to Boots. There is a competitive. Buzz uses the word juju, and I love it because Boots just gives that team juju. I enjoyed that. But I enjoyed Anderson Garcia this entire year. The growth and the maturity of Solomon Washington is exciting. It's very exciting. And we're joking about how it was in Memphis as a freshman they put him in at the end of that game against Memphis, and he's always been in that final five since then. And now he's just reliable. He's just a different player, and he, and he just brings just that athleticism. Who blocks a three-point shot with both their Little hands? hands? <laughs> and then comes down with it, of course, <laughs> and, and starts the break. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the most um, – I think that was the most memorable play of that win over Nebraska, which, by the way, was almost – as delicious as the win over Kentucky. I agree. Because I was in a hotel that was filled with Nebraska people, and I'm telling you, Nebraska has a uh, has a reputation of really polite. Oh, they friendly. were salty. They were, you know, these basketball <laughs> I if fans. The new athletic they're just had anything nasty, to do with that. and yeah. and they not one of them thought that A and M was going to lose. And even with the Japanese James Harden, uh, wow. who who scores a lot but faded when it really mattered. Um, you know, they, they just weren't enough, and they were broken. Yeah. And I like seeing your opponent broken. I agree. You I know, agree. Andrew, and, and when you look at this roster, obviously you can look at what's leaving with Boots, and you can look at the areas with which they struggled throughout the course of the year. And, like, that's why it's kind of so tough for, I think, the a and fan base to make out what this year was because – it's incredible that you rebounded from that five-game losing streak to make the tournament and get into mm-hmm. the round of 32. But then you're going, what if we'd have played better against Vanderbilt? Yeah, you're really underselling yourself. You've been awesome, dude. Homered in that uh, that prospect league game. And uh, it just seems like, especially in the batter's box, you, you've got like a, a real sense of confidence in your operation and what you're doing. Uh, where did, when did, did you really start to pick up like, hey, like I can do it at this level? Yeah, um, I think just having the really the confidence coming from a big school in the SEC. Um, you know, there's no stage like there is in college baseball in, in the SEC, and um, you know, being able to perform on the biggest stage and and even in the backfields of Arizona here, um, it's it's all the same game of baseball. And just knowing that you've kind of been there and done that, and you've seen the best of the best there is, really. Um, just kind of gives you that extra confidence coming in. And, I mean, you're competing with guys that are 16, 17 years old from other countries and then guys that are 28. So that's the, the, the world of professional baseball. What What is the biggest difference? And I asked Troy Clonch this yesterday, Trevor. What has been the biggest difference in terms of the game when you go from playing as much high-level SEC baseball as you did in your career at Texas A&M to professional baseball. Is it a different game? Is there some real nuances that stand out to you that are different? I would say the game is, is played a lot differently than uh, than college. <laughs> we always joke, like, um, you know, guys come from different countries and, and play a different style of baseball, really. I mean, their their job to get here is to have the best tools possible, and, and you know, they kind of learn the game later on. They're just – there to be the best player they can. And we always joke, like, I don't know if they would have played at our college just because their their style is completely different, not, not anything to knock on them. But 
Um, it's certainly a different way of, of playing the game. But um, competition-wise, I would say that, you know, you get your, your Friday guys in the SEC that um, – those those guys would definitely stand out. Hayden talked about some mechanical changes that he is working on with Michael Early, and you got to love as soon as you make a mechanical change, you see some results. That's got to make it stick a little bit more. Yeah, and also the fact that he's open to doing that. I mean, I think Coach Schlossnagel talked about that earlier, that some of these guys are pretty well established. Uh, they come in from other programs, but what Jackson Appel, Hayden Schott, and Ali Camarillo have done is they've been – uh, you know, open to change. They've been ready to to install what Michael Early does for them. The pitchers have done the same thing with Max Weiner. That's more with the whole group. But specifically, those guys that have success in, in other spots, sometimes it's like, well, why do I want to tinker with my swing? I've been able to do this. Well, in the SEC, and you get a, a, a hitting coach like Michael Early that's going to work with you, you know, if you're receptive to what he wants to do, he's only trying to make you better. He's not sitting here trying to make wholesale changes. It's a tweak here and there. And that's one of the reasons why when Hayden Schott gets it going, this lineup becomes even that more dangerous. And, you know, especially the right-handed pitchers, uh, you know, have, have really have a problem with what a is going to put out there and DH and, and left field with, uh, you know, Schott and Terrell really getting some time right now. Yeah, and the reason why you're able to slide Hayden Schott into that DH role is because the recent emergence of Caden Sorrell Offensively and defensively, and again last night, Richard has a double, had another hard hit ground ball into the shift. It seems like, and and, and I, he also tried to make another catch over the short wall and down the me. left field line, like he broke his yeah. ribs. But people forget, or maybe they don't know, that there wasn't that much of a gap in terms of prospect between Gavin Grahovic and Caden Sorrell. Everybody's timeline of when the the light goes on is different. But in terms of overall talent, Caden Sorrell is in the neighborhood of Gavin Grahovic. He just needs a little bit of seasoning and a little bit of, okay, I've seen it, I can do it, and a little bit of confidence, and we've seen him take off since then. And there, I mean, I think maybe the difference in the mindset of the fans is because they look so much different physically, right? Were you were you intrigued that Elko named him the number one guy? That's not something that we've been accustomed to. It didn't surprise me because I've talked, you know, I've, I've talked, but yeah, I like that. It's not something. McGee likes it too. I like it. Just name your guy. It doesn't mean that other guys can't compete and outperform him. I mean, I, you you and I know how we feel about Connor and his where where his ceiling is and what we expect him to do. But it it doesn't mean no one's competing. You've named starters. There are starters across your lineup across the field, and what Connor's done on the field, he he's earned that. He was a rising young star in the SEC when he hurt his foot. I mean, he was a – he. people were expecting, like, it, he might have had a massive year last year had he not gotten hurt. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think – I think you, that position especially, like, pick a horse, ride with it. And I think that's why he's out there right now. I don't think there's any risk of him re-injuring. I just think the muscles and everything, like, he just hasn't been able to – you know, he was slowed down in the working out and just kind of rebuilding the strength in that whole leg or whatever part of the leg, the lower leg there. But I don't think he's running the risk of getting hurt again, but probably if spring ball was a month later, he'd probably be a full participant. But it's important for him to be out there because he he's, you know, you're tabbing him as your guy, and he should be your guy. And that doesn't change the fact that those two – Others, Reed and Henderson, are going to have ample opportunity this spring to show what they can do. So uh, I like it. I like – it's been a while since we've – damn, it's been a while, it feels like, since we've had that. Well, it was Kellen probably Mon. Kellen, yeah, probably Kellen. And You had people wanting the Mon Calzada competition to come up. That was more media than it was uh, internal, though. Another position that I think it's an important spring for – is whoever's going to play next to Tory and York. Because you yeah. lose Edger and Cooper, who was the best player on your defense last year, and you don't yeah. have to replace like – you th- expect Torian to take another step forward, but to re- re- replace his production is what you're looking to do. And so whether that's Scooby Williams out of the portal, whether it's a, Marshall, a veteran like Marshall Harris or 
uh, Damian Sanford. Callie, tell them what they need to do. They need to like and comment, subscribe, share, and... I think you got them all. I think that was it, yeah. All right, enjoy your weekend. If you hated the B team, which is <laughs> what happens when I'm in the host chair, if you hate that, good news for you. David Nuno's back on Monday, but enjoy your weekend. Happy Easter.